we're going to make this uh, this quick. I know this is your lunch hour. We have 25 minutes, so we're going to we're going to breeze through this. Um, as uh, as many of you know, there's a lot going on right now at the University of Missouri, aka Mizzou, aka MU, or the the different things that people call it. Uh, concerned student 1950 is the hashtag that people are using for this. This is an extremely sensitive, charged topic. Uh, I'm sure you've noticed there are no black people up here. We're going to be talking about that. There are no representatives from Concerned Student 1950, the demonstration group up here. We're also going to talk about that. Um, the person next to me is Mark Shearbecker. Mark is a Mizzou student. Uh, he's also a photojournalist. Uh, he works for The Man Eater, which is the University of Missouri student-run newspaper as a staff photographer. Uh, he also is a frequent contributor and editor on Wikipedia, contributing uh, of photographs of current events for, for various articles. Uh, is your mic turned on? Uh, there's a switch on the side. On the top. Test your mic. Okay. Test. How many how many edits do you have? Uh, over sixty thousand. Okay, I've been yeah, contributing just for over six years. Okay, uh, so you know, regular contributor to Wikipedia, um, and uh, so what what we're going to be talking about today is is as I said something quite sensitive, and and I want to make sure that we address this in in the best way that we can. Uh, so the way that I'm going to start this off, I want I want everybody to understand what happened in context. Um, I am getting this information from the student newspaper, The Man Eater. They published a timeline of events on their website. I'm not gonna read the whole thing because it's long, but uh, the, the basics are, this started in August, according to The Man Eater's timeline, um, with Mizzou announcing that the graduate student health care uh, would be cut the next day. Uh, there was a forum on, uh, on graduate rights uh, a few days later that gave a list of seven demands to the administration with six days to respond about various things, including health care, but also student housing, child care facilities, and pay for graduate students. Uh, around the same time, the chancellor of the university, Chancellor Lofton, was called to testify in front of a hearing by Republican State Senator Kurt Schaefer of Columbia uh, over whether he was misusing public funds and breaking state law by uh, granting refer and follow privileges to a Planned Parenthood doctor uh, which under Missouri state law, if you're unfamiliar, is required. Uh, you, you have to have admitting privileges at a local hospital in order to perform abortions. Uh, so basically, uh, if, if these rights, these privileges were revoked, that would mean that you couldn't perform abortions in Columbia. You'd have to drive two hours for that. Uh, on August 26th, there was a walkout by the graduate students of the University of Missouri. Uh, on September 12th, this... Uh, shift this, this entire graduate student thing kind of came to a head and shifted focus primarily to racism. This is not a new problem on Mizzou's campus by any stretch, I wanna make that clear, uh, but as far as recent events, uh, September 12th is, is an important date for that. Uh, the Missouri Student Association president, uh, Peyton Head, uh, uh, he's a, a Mizzou student uh, and a black man, uh, posted on Facebook in a post that went viral about racial slurs that had been yelled to him. Uh, around the same time, the Association of American Universities uh, released a survey report showing that about 40% of Mizzou undergrad senior women had experienced some form of, quote, non-consensual sexual contact, end quote, uh, while they were at Mizzou. Uh, September 24th, the first Racism Lives Here, first of three rallies took place. Uh, I'm going to skip some of this, but, uh, but basically um, this, this shifted much more and more toward racism uh, as, as the head of this, this series of conflicts between the administration and grad students and, and undergraduate students. An uh, important event happened on October 10th. 11 protesters uh, who, who started using the hashtag student 1950 uh, again this is October 10th, were met with force by the Columbia Police Department, which is a separate department from MUPD, although they have overlapping geographical jurisdictions. Um, they were locking arms, trying to get the attention of Mizzou System President Tim Wolf. Uh, a demonstrator from one of those 11 protesters was bumped by the car that Tim Wolf was riding in. He wasn't the driver. Uh, but the next day, there was a, the third of three Racism Lives Here rallies at Mizzou's campus, uh, which was ended early by Mizzou police. And uh, the same day, uh, a second event that had been planned was canceled because of that. 
uh, on October 20th, a group of protesters that stemmed from those original 11 uh, issued a list of demands to the university, giving them eight days for a response. Uh, on October 21st, in response to the Planned Parenthood rally and, and outcry over that, uh, new contracts were granted uh, uh, so that uh, it has to do with healthcare and some other things. But moving on, uh, October 24th, there was a swastika drawn on Mizzou's campus with feces. This was the second swastika-related incident in 2015. Uh, the October 26th, so this was six days after the demand list was presented, uh, Concerned Student 1950 met with Wolf, uh, but he didn't offer a plan to address their concerns. Uh, November 2nd, uh, grad student Jonathan Butler, who is a Facebook friend of mine and I've, I've met him in person also, uh, began a hunger strike uh, saying that, that he would end his hunger strike either when revolt, uh, Wolf was uh, re removed from office, either by resigning or being fired, or when he died, uh, Butler died. Uh, the next day, Wolf issued a statement that he is concerned about Butler's health uh, and is willing to talk. Uh, the next day, the English department uh, faculty issued a 26 uh, to 0 against vote of no confidence in the chancellor. Um, the, a, a lot of other things happened. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm skipping some of this. Um, November 6th, Wolf issued a statement uh, about the car incident, apologizing to concerned student 1950. Um, but hours later that same evening, uh, when asked what systematic oppression is, he told a group of protesters that, quote, systematic oppression is because you don't believe that you have an equal opportunity for success, end quote, uh, victim blaming, essentially. Um, November 7th, the MU football players announced a boycott until Wolf resigns. Um, November 9th, uh, there are several other things happening here, but November 9th, uh, Wolf resigned, and this is, this is where things got huge as far as national and international news. Uh, Jonathan Butler ended his hunger strike at the news of Wolf's resignation. Uh, concerned student 1950 declared the Carnahan Quadrangle on Mizzou's campus, which is a, a grassy uh, area, uh, it's a public space, as a safe space um, while the protesters uh, processed this news and celebrated. Uh, and journalists uh, on the scene, uh, which was every major journalism outlet in the country, uh, and students who were not protesters part of that camp uh, were forcibly removed from the area by faculty and by the student protesters. Um, a few hours later, Lofton uh, also resigned, so the two top officials of the Mizzou system. Um, so, uh, this, this didn't end there. Uh, the next day on social media, there were death threats. The day after that, police arrested a white college student from Rolla, Missouri, not a, a, an attendee of the University of Missouri. Um, for those Yikak threats, November 12th, just the other day, the Gaines Old and Black Culture Center on Mizzou's campus, their sign was vandalized. Uh, and then that same day, Mike Middleton was named the interim president. Uh, Mike Middleton is a law professor. He is one of the first black uh, students to graduate from the Mizzou Law School. He was one of the original co-founders uh, of the Legion of Black Collegians and also drafted the original 1969 list of demands uh, from the uh, Legion of Black Collegians to administration at Mizzou at the time, to the president at the time, for improving race relations on campus. Um, and his, uh, his appointment as interim president was greatly supported by Concerned Student 1950, but they also obviously want input on the permanent president. So coming back to the context of where we are, uh, the reason that Mark is here is that Mark shot video of the, uh, it's being called a clash uh, by news, uh, between the journalists uh, who were capturing this, this newsworthy moment uh, in, in, in their, uh, the opinion of their editors who assigned them to this at least, and the, uh, the non-protester students who were also there, and the protesters who had designated this public area as a safe space and uh, had requested that media leave the area and when they did not do so, forcibly removed them. Uh, so this has been national news, this, this video that he shot. Um, it's, it's been in uh, New York Times and Washington Post and a, a whole bunch of others. Uh, a couple of important things to note about that video. The video that went viral about this, it's at, I don't know, two and a half million hits or something like that. 
is a six minute clip of 22 total minutes of footage. So if you've only seen a viral one or if you haven't seen anything, you are not seeing the full picture. And I don't want you to make judgments about everything that happened based on that. And even then, this whole thing has been going on for at least months and you obviously can't make a full judgment about all of that either. Um, so as far as why there aren't any black students up here, which I recognize is, is a valid question, and why aren't there any representatives from Concerned Student 1950 up here, which again is a very valid question. Uh, the organizers of Concerned Student 1950, which is so-called because that's when the uh, first black students were admitted to the University of Missouri 1950, uh, they are being inundated with media requests. I have personally uh, reached out in person and online to Jonathan Butler, the grad student who went on hunger strike. Uh, I also met with Melissa Click, who we'll see in this video coming up. I've been in contact via email and text message and Twitter uh, multiple times with multiple people who are protesting and with faculty. So far, either people have expressed interest but haven't gotten back to us uh, or uh, weren't able to, to be in person uh, or, or do it over Skype. Um, or they declined to go on record about it. Uh, I, I just want to make it clear that it is, it is, we exhausted every reasonable effort to have somebody up here talking about that. And, and our options were uh, not talk about what's going on at Mizzou, which I think is journalistically irresponsible. Um, and and uh, this, this is an, an, a learning moment for people. Um, or, uh, or talk about it just from the viewpoint of one eyewitness uh, who is a journalist um, and, and has video that, that you can look at for yourself if you want to see more context. Um, so we elected to talk about this with just Mark, not out of any, any lack of trying to, to make it more inclusive than that of the full picture. Uh, the reason that Mark was able to be here is that he was already planning to come to Skepticon. Mark is also an officer of the University of Missouri SSA group and has been coming to this conference for several years. So, uh, so okay, Mark, I, I want to talk to you and, and ask you some questions about this. Uh, tell me why you think you're up here. Why, why are you on this stage? I was um, there on the scene. I was there as a photojournalist. Um, I've, I've been doing this for a, a good solid two and a half years. Uh, I, I look a lot to current events on campus uh, as, a, as a larger reflection of uh, nationwide trends. Um, uh, I, I keep very current with the news. Um, I, I happen to follow this one pretty closely. Um, I, I, I saw when um, the grad rights movement sprung out of uh, the, the administration canceling health insurance for grad students, and I, I saw them unionize, and that was pretty empowering. So I was there to document what happened and also to um, uh, experience a little bit of history in the making. And it's correct, uh, you were at the Planned Parenthood rally after, after that contract was canceled. Okay. Um, Mark, uh, more than 100 schools are standing in solidarity all over the country and, and several in other countries uh, with Concerned Student 1950. Black students at Mizzou are facing immediate danger. They're using a buddy system. They are uh, being excused from, from uh, being marked absent from class if they elect not to attend class. Uh, they are, they, uh, before this happened, during it and after, they're receiving the threats and, and racial slurs. Um, as I mentioned, the, the Black Culture Center in Mizzou was vandalized. Uh, and you've said yourself on social media, and we've talked privately about this, that, the, that this story is, is at its core about racism about systemic institutionalized oppression of black students at the Mizzou campus and on college campuses generally is going on the news to talk about this freedom of the press issue uh, distracting from this discussion about racism. I uh, did want to say that um, as long as I've been a sec secular activist um, going on about two years now, I've been always a, a free speech advocate. This is something I follow very closely and is very near and dear to my heart. Um, and it's um, awesome that we're having this conversation now. 
uh, and that I could be a part of it. So uh, this wasn't um, this wasn't my motive going in it to to just um, to make this the 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 number two story of the day under um, uh, Mizzou's um, um, protest, but. Um, I, it, it's something that's important to me, um, and it, it's great that the media is going that way with it. But at the same time, um, the bigger story needs to be about racism. It's um, it's white oppression is not the same as black oppression. Black oppression affects way more, a lot, a lot more people in in ways that a, a, a white journalist can't even. Co comprehend um, that doesn't take away from the fact that um, what happened that day was unacceptable, um, but we and we also need to, to keep the story on racism. But it isn't mutually exclusive to support uh, press rights um, and also support um, concerned students. 1950. I was there as a neutral party. I was still uh, in the process of learning and and making. Uh, a, Decisions about um, what what way I, I stood. I flip flopped many times in the course of this um, as it as it played out and, and evolved really rapidly. But uh, I was there as a journalist. Um, what what spewed from that was um, uh, really a disservice to the, the the bigger story of racism on uh, public universities across the nation. Okay, uh, so we have. 12 minutes, um, but I want to play and, and I want everyone to understand this is an edited clip um, of an edited clip. There is much more footage than this. You are not seeing the big picture and, and this is something that Mark put together to give context to, to help you understand what, what happened so that you can see it. So we have this, this video clip here. Uh, actually, first, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let's go ahead and play the video because you have it up. Okay. It's a super cut. It's, it is not the full context. There's an additional 20 minutes up there. Okay. Go ahead. Close it off. Close it off. All right, everybody, move out. Make the circle bigger. Yeah, there is. You're with the media. You need to back up. You need to get back up behind those signs. That's what those signs say. You need to back up. You're back up. I am a student. I do my job. Can you tell him how much? You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our photos. You don't have a right to take our
Okay, yeah, that's fine, just skip to. Okay, so this is a shot of what you were seeing in the video from above. Uh, and, and they were expanding the circle of linked arms outward. These are protesters and students protecting um, the, this camp out of people uh, supporting Jonathan Butler while he was on hunger strike. Uh, they'd been out there uh, several days at least. I'm not exactly sure. Eight days. Eight days. Um, so what, what Melissa Click did, Melissa Click is the, the curly-haired, red-headed woman that, that you saw uh, in the second part of the video. Um, she was denying journalists access to a public area. Um, with uh, a, a threat of force, uh, asking for muscle to involuntarily remove Mark and other journalists from this area. Um, and, and using force, uh, I mean, as far as the, the legal technical definition, she grabbed your camera, she shoved you, uh, at least that's what it looks like to me. And, and I've looked at the rest of the 22 minutes of footage and, and this happened to multiple journalists as far as uh, their arms being pushed down when they tried to take pictures, being physically shoved. Um, so, uh, I mean, the, the conflict here seems pretty clear. They were asking for a safe space to process this news. Um, legally, technically, journalists have a First Amendment right to cover this. Uh, as a photojournalist, I understand that it is important to, to be there in that moment, to capture the human story in a single photo. I mean, this is a perfect example of that. Um, and and this, is, this is what photojournalism is about, but, uh, in the, in the six minutes that we have, I want to point out that uh, the other woman that we saw um, who is saying that my name is 1950, uh, she is also Mizzou staff. Uh, her name is Jana Bostler. She works for Greek Life. She is on administrative leave because of this video, uh, pending the outcome of an investigation about whether she should keep her job or not. Uh, so, Mark, tell me what's going on right now, and, and we, we're short on time, but tell me what the university has done uh, about Melissa Click's action. Um, no one from the university has reached out to me. Um, Melissa Click has been the only uh, faculty to, um, to call me on a, um, on a formal basis. Um, uh, the university is silencing this. Um, and they, they aren't interested in an outcome that um, puts Melissa out of, out of uh, her position. They've tried to make it look like she, um, she, she um, has been investigated and, and it's, it's in the process. They've said that she's resigned her, her, um, her position with the journalist school. She's still a full-time faculty with the communications department. So, uh, nothing uh, substantive has actually occurred because of this. Okay, so just just to be clear, Melissa Click issued a written statement uh, as a formal apology. Uh, she has also apologized to Mark in person. I was at that meeting, um, and uh, at that meeting, um, or excuse me, in the statement, um, she apologized uh, to journalists and to the MU campus community, in her words, which includes you, Mark. Um, for her actions, language, strategies, and behavior are the words that she used, and for the way her actions have shifted attention away from students' campaign for justice. So those are her words. Uh, she says multiple times in this statement that she is sincere, uh, but it's my understanding that you're pursuing legal charges against her. Uh, can you tell me why and what redress you're seeking that, uh, that you're not getting from this apology in person or from the written statement apology? Sure. Um, I, I um, uh, filed uh, the, the night this occurred, um, and I um, and I waited on it and waited on it, uh, and 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 uh, not until uh, two nights ago did I decide to to move forward with it. Um, the um, what caused me to um, go for charges was that um, Melissa did not seem. Uh, entirely sincere in her apology. We offered her the chance to um, make up for it by appearing in front of a journalist um, in a neutral venue and defend her actions, dialogue with us, and apologize to the campus at large. Uh, she has uh, not accepted that off offer, and, uh, and, and all we've heard from her is silence. So um, we, in order to push this forward, we are um, 
we are letting the prosecuting attorney um, deal with this deal with this situation. He's going to um, look at the video and decide what and if any uh, crimes occurred. Okay, um, so I'm, I'm sorry, we're short on time. I just want to make this clear. You're talking about prosecutor attorney. You're talking about criminal court. You're not talking about a First Amendment violation. You're talking about an assault charge. As of today, there isn't a uh, civil court case that could be in the future. Um, it, it is a First Amendment um, issue, in my opinion, but we uh, haven't gotten that far in the process. The, the, the most immediate closure we can get is to press assault. Okay. Um, and, and to be clear, uh, you are not the one who, who labels this assault. That's up to the Missouri state law and up to the prosecutor whether that qualifies mm -hmm. enough to, press, to, to pursue charges. Well, the same video I saw, they okay. can, they can uh, make And they took your, your statement the day that this happened, uh, and, and they labeled it assault. That wasn't you that labeled it assault? Mm -hmm. Okay. The preliminary decision is that it's assault. It's assault. Okay. So um, we, have, we have two minutes left. Um, but, uh, Mark, I'm going to ask you a direct question, and, and I'm sorry if this is uncomfortable. I need you to answer this. Are you racist? Uh, Everybody is a little bit racist. Um, uh, whether they acknowledge it or even realize it, uh, everyone has prejudices um, that manifest themselves um, in public-facing situations. Uh, the Mizzou students have legitimate grievances because of this. Uh, it, it is a very white campus, um, and um, but. Yes, yes, I, I have white privilege, and um, as a white person, it is a, my duty to um, use my white privilege in a way that um, can uh, result in uh, fewer white privileges um, in the future and greater equality across the board. Okay. Um, uh, like I said, I mean, we're, we're pretty much out of time, but I think the the last question I need to ask you is, what is what's the plan going forward? What are you, if racism is important to you, as you've set up here and, and on social media, that you think that racism is the primary issue here? Um, and, and I think, you know, we understand that this is, uh, this is a criminal issue. You're not pursuing it, at least at the moment, uh, you know, First Amendment type civil violation here. Um, what, what's the plan? What are, what are you going to do to, uh, as a Mizzou student who, who is an eyewitness to this, as a journalist, uh, what do you, I mean, Separating activism from journalism is another question, but what are you going to do to help with racism on, on Mizzou's campus uh, if that's an activist issue that you care about? And, and what's, what's the next step for all of this? Uh, the best way anyone can c combat uh, racism is to not allow it to go unacknowledged. Um, if, for example, a friend is, um, is saying something um, subtly racist, uh, you don't want to passively endorse their position by not saying anything. The, the movement has said from the beginning, um, white silence is violence. And um, that, is, that is fundamentally true. Um, in, in order to, um, to, um, to combat racism, we need to um, acknowledge that it has an, an everyday place in our lives. Uh, what we're doing going forward is um, is, is allowing um, concerned students to um, continue to do what they're doing. They're doing good work, in my opinion. Um, but what we can do as journalists is have our moment, finally. Um, this has been a pressing problem against us for years, uh, is that campuses are curtailing freedoms of the press, of speech. Um, and so, um, we ha we're in a unique position where we're in the, the national s spotlight again. Um, so we need to, to use the momentum. I, I'm applying um, charges. Uh, we're doing everything we can to make sure that the administration acknowledges that this is a problem. What they're doing is illegal. Um, OK, yeah, uh, we're out of time, um, but I, I think uh, we covered the the basics of this. Again, you're seeing part of the story. I, I also wanted to, to post this. I'm sorry we didn't get to it sooner. Uh, the, the day after this happened, this would be Tuesday, the day after the clash, uh, the Concerned Student 1950 group 
was passing out these flyers, um, calling this a teachable moment, uh, it, it, making sure everyone understood that the media has a First Amendment right to be there, making sure that they, everyone understands that the media is helpful in getting out the story about oppression on campus and telling this story. Uh, I mean, that, that's why they're there. The, the, the student journalist you saw who was on assignment from ESPN, um, the, the Asian American man, Tim Tai, the, the tall with the black shirt. The, ra the reason that he was there from ESPN was because of the football player strike. These are audiences that we're reaching with journalism to share this story about oppression of, of black students. Um, and so that's, that's what you're trying to do, that's what we're all trying to do. So let's, let's do that, let's get back to that. Um, okay, we're out of time, thank you very much. So yeah, we, we had envisioned this as, as a kind of uh, interview, a live interview, and uh, it wasn't my call to call to a Q&A, &A, and I, I could have addressed that. I apologize for not doing that. I also apologize for that we didn't have time to, to open it up to live questions. Um, I, I admit that that is a problem. We are available for questions afterward. Welcome to go on the record if you want to record that, and um, we can post it to YouTube or whatever method you would like. Um, I don't, I'm not trying to speak for Mark, but I, I think that he would agree we're not trying to, to n not answer questions. We had, we had this conflict of uh, not being able to get anyone who was up here in, in time to do this, who was directly involved uh, with this protest. And we could either ask a person to, to be up here and tell that side of the story who was not involved and ask a black person to speak on behalf of all black people, which I didn't want to do. Or, uh, or we could just have Mark's side represented, which is not ideal either. And uh, if we had more time, and, and I mean, we're past time now, and I apologize, uh, I, w I would like to do live Q&A. Um, if you have additional questions, Mark's uh, Twitter is here. He'll be here all weekend. We're not trying to avoid anybody, um, and we're willing to, you're, is that correct? You're willing to post whatever, if people want to ask you questions, you think I can record it, post it online uh, for further discussion. Does that help? I, I hear that, and I just have one comment. Okay. If, if the point is to uplift and validate the perspective and to honor the black students, particularly the black students in Mizzou, I find it highly problematic that the point of this is to uplift your narrative as a white male entering a black space and then having, I'm sorry, the audacity to file a, a lawsuit about, about assaults as a white person, you were assaulted when black people are dying every day in the streets and we can't even get a police officer to be indicted and you don't have the audacity to fight against a, another white woman. If you're going to uplift black people, uplift that and don't make this, make this about yourself and what you want to do in this part. The point is to uplift black people. Do that. I, I hear you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, do, do you have, if we have time, do you want to address that? I, I, it's up to the organizers. I'm filming it, so okay. I'll stay yeah. here as long as y'all want to talk. Um, I'm, I'm doing my best to uh, represent the press side of this. Um, I'm not a black person. I, I don't have any sort of um, unprivileged background. I've had a very privileged life. Um, that being said, if, if someone wants to come up here and and represent the black side of things. Um, we've, been, we've been open to it. We've been di dialoguing um, constantly the, the past few days with concerned student. Um, we weren't able to, uh, obviously, um, to get them to agree to this. Um, I, I, I wish we had, we had known that you were here and, and interested in this. I, I think you would have been a, a, a fantastic person to have up here um, interviewing me instead of Danielle. Um, She's my publicist, um, and we acknowledge that. But um, thank you uh, for your question. Uh, just, just to clarify, I'm a professional PR person. Uh, Mark is an old friend of mine. I'm not being paid. Uh, I'm helping him because he doesn't have experience handling PR. Um, but uh, it's, it's a friendly thing. I'm, I'm not a, a, an official publicist for him. Yes? I have a question. 
do you have any reaction or response to the fact that, especially online, a lot of people, mostly right wing, mostly white, mostly conservative, who have previously expressed racist views, have seized upon your video, have seized upon this whole issue as a way to undermine and dismiss black students and black people? I'm partially guilty of that this past week. I've spoken to um, a lot of conservative uh, media outlets like um, Breitbart, uh, Fox News, count countless others. And um, uh, it, it's um, unfortunate that, um, that for the, the most part, the people who share our views are, are conservative, and it's very one-sided uh, narrative. But we're trying to, we're trying to, uh, as best as we can, just, um, just represent the, the situation as fairly as possible. Um, uh, we're not hijacking the movement to advance our dialogue. I, as I said, I, I've been passionate about this for the, the past um, three or so years um, because my livelihood as a journalist depends on our ability to uh, speak freely and to um, to uh, document um, without being interfered with. Um, Would you be willing to put out a recorded statement to racists who have used your video to justify their views? Um, yes. Um, in, in fact, I mean, it's just been too busy. I, I can't, you know, uh, I, I saw in my news in my inbox this morning that there was a forum opened up on um, Stormfront, which is a, a white supremacist website, um, unfortunately. But, you know, I just don't have, I haven't had the time to process and, and think of uh, a response to that. Yes. Yes. I was kind of disappointed to um, not hear more about, like, the media conceptually in the media as a group in this, and it's just been more about, you know, how you've been treated as a media person, but not, a, well, there's a re there are reasons why the occupation doesn't want the media there. There are reasons why, you know, um, when we protest in Kansas City too, we kick media out. There are reasons why that. There, there's a difference between um, that and, say, a citizen journalist. Right, and I'm not sure. Like, I can't tell where you're at on that. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? And the fact that there's reasons why, but we have almost a thousand black people being killed by cops. And there's not shit on the media about it, right? So, but yet we want to have two, two and a half million hits. Concerned student has has admitted. You saw the flyer um, two slides back, um, where they they've they've changed. They've done a 180. They they are now working with us. I look forward to going back to Columbia this week so that I can actually talk to people. I, I hope that the status quo has actually changed. Um, but yeah, as I as I said, um, the every every movement goes through this. Occupy did it. They they tried to uh, limit. Uh, exposure uh, to the media, and they 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 lost that legally, and they lost that morally, and now they they they've, they've um, ad admitted that it's it's just so much better to be on good relations with the press than to fight it constantly. Yes. Um, I was on Carnahan Quad this day. Okay. Um, I'm a Mizzou student. I just want to know uh, when it was requested that press leave the area so that. Concerned Student 1950 could have some privacy to reflect, pray, and prepare for a press conference, which was scheduled. Um, most of the professional media complied with that request as a professional and um, just respect for the humanity of these students who had been living on that quad for eight days. And it was 
Mizzou students who are complicit in this problem, who had the problem with exiting the area out of respect. And I'm wondering if that's affected the way that you're going to approach your profession in the future. I disagree that most um, journalists left the, the scene. Uh, um, from what I saw, it, it wasn't just international um, media in there uh, to get a, a story at any cost. It, it was students who had a right, a legal right, right to be there. Um, they paid the same tuition as anyone else uh, was there. Um, your question. Um, uh, would, would I have respected them more? Um, I, I, what I saw was a, a great moment taking place. I, um, I would have liked to have gotten more um, from, the, the, um, from that, that moment, which was ephem ephemeral. And uh, unfortunately, it's lost to history. And instead, we have to talk about this silly, this silly video. Um, it's silly, right? Can we, can we all agree? You're pressing charges. Right. You're pressing charges. <laughs> it is silly. Let it go and help focus and, and amplify the voices will, of the yeah, black people. I'm not, I'm not the one who's, who determines that. All I did was I, I was um, fine with them uh, dealing with the situation. They, they need affirmation that I am actually um, willing to go through the process. They actually make the, the call on that, whether to uh, call for assault, and everything I've heard so far is assault, assault, assault. Whether there's a, a larger civil uh, case, I, I haven't heard yet um, that could be in the near future. So, uh, uh, just, just to clarify, I'm not a lawyer. I've, I've done a little bit of research about this, and I have law enforcement in my family who have asked about this. Um, just to be, to be clear about this, it's my understanding that the way this works, there are two separate court systems, civil criminal, and assault is a criminal charge it is not up to the victim to, uh, to press charges. The prosecutor makes that determination. Uh, you have cooperative victims and you have uncooperative victims. Sometimes victims choose not to press charges and sometimes victims very much want to press charges, but it's ultimately up to the prosecutor in a criminal case. In a civil case, a First Amendment violation, that is totally separate. You have to pay for that yourself if you want to pursue it. Um, but uh, often this gets confused because if it's, if it's a case where nobody was physically harmed, you know, hospitalized or anything, if it's a case where there was no serious property damage, the prosecutor will say, do you care about this? Or do you, you know, is it okay if I get back to other cases because uh, I have a high caseload and, and other things are possibly more urgent? Um, yes? Okay, yeah. Thank you, and yeah, I, 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 I understand that, I hear you. Um, if, if somebody is assaulted, I mean, it's, that's what the law says, uh, and there's a, def a definition of this, I'm not trying to excuse it. Uh, I just, I just want to make clear that he is not, it's my understanding, uh, at least right now, not pursuing civil charges. This is not about First Amendment thing. This is uh, an assault charge that the prosecutor makes the determination of whether the incident report that you filed uh, qualifies as, as assault, and, and if the evidence is strong enough to get a conviction, the prosecutor makes that choice, not you. Are assault charges being pressed against the driver uh, during the homecoming parade that tapped, hit uh, Jonathan Butler during their protest? Are, are assault charges I, going I to that driver? That information. I, I um, do want to get back to an old question. Um, I want to go on the record. Uh, you asked if um, the journalist and the photographer over there wants to know if I, I would go on the record as saying, um, uh, calling out news media outlets who are racist. Uh, I want to go on the record right now and say, fuck racists, okay? Um, and that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> have you taken history of American journalism yet? Uh, I'm, I'm not a journalism student. I, it's something I, I uh, it's not something I study professionally, but it's it's something I'm always working better to get. There is a whole unit around. in that semester covering the divide between white media and black experience in the history of the U.S. and how white media would frequently mischaracterize or do outright racist 
coverage on black communities, and I think that would be very instructive for you to study up on. Thank you. I also recommend looking at Stephen Thrasher, who is a black journalist who was there that day, Darnell Moore, who is a leader in the Black Lives Matter movement. He is also a journalist. And then also, you know, reach out to other white folks that are having this discussion. Showing up for racial justice is a national organization, and they've been doing a lot of work, particularly in St. Louis and Ferguson. So I would recommend looking into those resources and talking to black journalists that are in the same predicament, talking about freedom of speech, talking about freedom to live as black people. They have written some very powerful pieces. Also, uh, Jelani Cobb. I recommend those three individuals in particular. Thank you. And uh, I'm, I, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to put words in, in Mark's mouth, but I've spent a lot of time with him in the last several days. Mark is, I don't think you would disagree with this statement, interested in learning and growing from this experience and being a better person and a better journalist from it. Uh, I mean, do you want to address that? Um, it's been a learning experience for me. Uh, if, um, if I had known what I knew now, I would have done things differently, in court, including um, not pandering to, to Breitbart, um, uh, saying things a little bit differently, and, and also uh, going on the record that um, racists suck, and, um, but it is something I, I would l later like to pursue professionally, so I am always becoming a better journalist. Uh, okay, I, I want to just, if, if we have some time for this, you, you said fuck racism and you said racists suck. You've also said that everyone is a little bit racist and you've acknowledged your own white privilege. Can you reconcile those statements for me? I think everyone is a little bit racist, yes. I, I, still, I still agree with that. Um, fuck me too. Uh, let's say that. Um, you can all each come up to me later and say fuck you for being racist because I, I am probably a little bit prejudiced against um, certain minorities. I, it's, um, it's, it's a systemic problem. It's not something I, I do consciously. Um, but that can change. I, I don't have to, um, I'm going to, to end up at the end of this week a little bit less racist than I was last week. Um, I, 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 this, this is a constant battle. Everyone should be constantly checking their privilege, uh, making sure that their, their friends aren't, they aren't tacitly um, uh, reaffirming their, their friends' beliefs by, by not saying anything when they say something stupid and racist. Um, and we should all be working on that. I, I just, I wanna clarify again, I brought this up before, but you, you have a unique role here because you're not just a white person from Missouri and a Missouri student who was present, but you are also a journalist. What, as a journalist, what are, what are you gonna do to, to be a better journalist, to be a less racist white journalist uh, going forward? What, what, I, I wanna know what you learned from this. I wanna know, uh, and I'm not, I'm not trying to accuse you, know, you or make you feel bad, but I wanna know what you learned from this that's gonna be different next time you're covering uh, this type of issue um, and, and what, what advice you would have for yourself a week ago? A week ago? Um, the biggest thing would be... Um, uh, hey guys, this I, is I Mike, so just... pay closer attention to my own social media posts. Some of them were uh, quite critical of the, um, of the movement. Um, and I, I don't think I... And I, and I said a lot of things that, without fully realizing their implications uh, during the co course of this week, um, um, do you want to rephrase that question for me? Yeah, well, I just, I want to know, as, as a journalist as, uh, who is acknowledging your white privilege and is acknowledging that, that you and, and other white journalists play a, a very large role in, 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 uh, in deciding the narrative that is presented to people, um, through, through your work. Uh, what, what are you going to do to be more equitable in the future uh, to, to make this better going forward, acknowledging that, that as a white person uh, you, you have racist things that you're trying to overcome uh, and acknowledging the, your white privilege uh, uh, in, as a media person? Uh, from going forward, I'm going, to, just as I, 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 
because I disagree with safe zones on public areas. I'm going to get out of my own safety bubble of only covering the, the same issues that affect white people. Um, and, uh, and, and maybe having a little bit more dignity and respect for st students that have to, uh, to deal with this on, on campus on a daily basis. I, I think that's admirable, yeah. Uh, you have a question? Whenever I've seen in the past, like, uh, people who are having trouble and don't want to talk to reporters for whatever reason, I, I, often, I often think paparazzi at that point. And it, it's just very much one of those situations where what could people have done to get you to leave them alone so that they could get what they needed to do done short of the force that was actually used then? Mm -hmm. Sure, they, they um, could have got the word out sooner. Um, uh, this was, yeah, this, this wasn't on them actually. I'm going to go back on that. Um, this, the announcement was such a surprise. It was so early in the game that uh, nobody really knew what to do. They, they did a short um, press, press conference, if you can call that, um, and, and then they said they would reconvene. Um, if, if they want to um, set up a private area um, off campus where they can, they can go and, and have some peace and quiet, um, then that's fine by me. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to go into their homes and or knock on their doors. And, and even if they wanted to, you know, uh, just call their their tent, their their safe space, I could go with that. Um, but also, journalists need to respect uh, personal boundaries. If and I didn't, I don't know if I saw this happening. But if someone in their tent, and this this has been brought up, would you have gone into their tent if if um, if it, if it came to that? Um, I, I I would draw the line there, um, but before invading their their tent to take um, to take photos. Um, uh, I think journalists can can also learn from this experience and, and have a little bit, little bit more um, courtesy and, and, and respect for this, um, this um, my, minority uh, oppressed um, segment of the, the, the campus. Questions? Yep. Um, so, this is a race issue for sure, but it's also a media issue, which I'm very interested in through independent media and such. And I guess I want to know your thoughts on what it looked like, right? Is this white dude with all of his privilege busting through these black people or people, you know, supporting, protecting an area of blackness uh, for um, a safe space, right? Busting through there without any regard to get whatever you needed, right? That's what it looks like, right? But there's also, on the media side, and contrary to what you said earlier about, oh, there's the media and racism don't really go together, to me, they're the same, right? It's because black people and brown people aren't even represented in media correctly, right? And it certainly didn't seem that that's what you were doing in the video. But what are your thoughts on that? A lot of the reason why um, journalists aren't you know, allowed or welcome in places like Occupy and things and other uh, places where so social justice protests are going on is because that um, those stories are spun and twisted and lies are injected into them. every single time we see that every single time I've talked to the uh, given an interview not just me everybody I know I was heavily involved with Occupy myself right it doesn't matter it is only people citizen journalists who are telling the truth right and so there's, there is that reason. If you're, if, why don't people trust you to let you in there, right? It's because who you work for, how you're gonna spin the, the, the story, you know, all of those things that people aren't gonna be uh, fairly represented. That's a problem with the media. That's a problem with huge mainstream conglomerates, right? And so that's another reason why people wouldn't want you there, 
And what are your thoughts on that? How can you be a better journalist without, um, you know, your stories, you know, being spun and twisted into something that's not true? And how can you combat those mainstream media um, conglomerates by still representing um, the people and oppressed people like black people? Um, that's a good point. Um, yeah, I, I, I was there as a citizen journalist. I, I was not there with Fox News. Fox News, by the way, did very much what, what you're talking about, um, uh, rallying up the, the crowd um, afterwards to get some, some um, strong opinions um, said by, by white racists who were students. Um, uh, but I think that the activist movements can do a little bit better of discriminating between who's doing it and who is um, and who is just there as a citizen journalist trying to get the story, uh, because uh, either they they're students and they're learning and they're they're making mistakes and but they're still trying to represent the situation as honestly as possible, um, and those like Fox News uh, who are who are out there to get the story. Um, they shouldn't ruin it for everybody. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, One I'm, more I'm, and then. I'm sorry, I've been informed that we need to wrap up. This is not a conversation that we're going to resolve today on this stage. Um, Mark is here all weekend. Uh, I, I would love for you to continue asking him questions on the record, off the record, whatever you want. Uh, you're welcome to record anything that he says. Uh, you're saying. It's fine to post this online, um, but we, we have to stop on this stage. Hey, what time uh, but I, I really appreciate it, your comments. I really appreciate you listening to, to this. I apologize how one-sided this is. We, we made uh, the, the most exhaustive effort I, I was capable of, offered hotel space, offered a ride, uh, reached out in every method I possibly could to get someone else up here. Uh, who was from Concerned Student 1950 without success. Um, can, we, can we go 10 more minutes on this? I feel like this is a good I'm time. happy to. I was told I'm, it's okay with if me. It's one, if <laughs> I'm, I'm skipping my lunch for this, so let's go 10 more minutes if everyone wants to keep talking about this. Okay, I think this okay. is a wonderful... Rob. Right, hold the audio over there. I think this moved out of frame. <laughs> okay, I don't care about the frame. I care about the audio, but thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, you acknowledged uh, earlier that your six-minute clip, the, the video that went viral is uh, problematic because it was edited in a way that cuts out some pretty significant context. Um, you know, your, your video cuts out right when Melissa Click, who actually was able to leave her house for the first time yesterday since the event, um, cuts out right after she calls for muscle so you don't see what happens. So it, it kind of draws that conclusion in the viewer's mind that this call for muscle somehow directly silenced your voice right then. Um, the muscle showed up in the form of a couple of pretty polite dudes who just kept saying, hey, I understand what you're doing. Can you just respect our space right now? I'll walk out with you. Um, you know, that, that really important context was kind of cut out. You acknowledged that. Would you uh, take down the uh, six minute video and uh, direct people to watch the 12 minute video? Clarification. Because that six minute video is being used to reinforce white supremacy and uh, just complete uh, the, right wing media. The, the video that's online is, uh, and I posted everything I have uh, except for two photos I took, um, is the, 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 the short uh, version that, that cuts off um, where, um, where Melissa first engages me is completely and unedited. It actually gets worse after that. The long version, uh, which you've seen parts of today, um, is um, is up online. I encourage everyone in this room to, to go home and watch it. It's it's really fantastic. Um, uh, I, I think I, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but I, I think what he wants you to say is that you, will you encourage people outside this room, the the millions of people who watch this video, to watch the long version and, and see more context of this. Obviously, 22 minutes is also not the full context, but 
uh, can you put a, a link or an annotation or I mean something to the long I mean to do what we can to direct people to that? Yeah, um, I've I've been I, I've only tweeted it once. Um, uh, it's 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 out there. I I need to probably be more um, aggressive about sharing it. It's um it's I've I've since I, I uploaded it. I actually um. um Link to it in in a uh, annotation box, um, probably even put it in the summary description. Um, but because of time, the the only reason that the short video is up that is up that's about six minutes is because I was pressed for time and it needed to go right two minutes ago. Um, uh, so um, yeah, I mean everyone in this room go. Please do watch it. Um, and, and, and also, I, I just want to acknowledge that by, by pushing people to watch the longer version, that, that's kind of a double-edged sword. Because if you want to go back to the core issue being racism, do you, I, maybe you disagree with me on this, but do you think that you need to stop talking about this part of it uh, as, as publicly and stop talking about the, the uh, assault part and the First Amendment issue if that, if that comes up later? Um, it seems, I mean, feel free to disagree, but it, it feels to me like continuing to do a, a lot of tweeting and pushing of, of coverage of this part is distracting from that, whether that's your intent or not. Um, can you address that? Um, yeah, the, um, the two and a half million views one, which is the, the short one, um, is by far the most popular. The, the, the second, the second longer version that's um, almost almost everything, is um, is has about five hundred thousand views by this point. Um, yeah, is that so right? I I don't know, but I, but I mean if that's if that's accurate, if it's at half a million views, uh, I think I think it's fair to say that you it's not invisible. I mean, yeah, I, I, but, I, but I, at I this point, message it to. Journalist. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That was that's what yeah. I was asking. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but at this, I mean, at this point, by continuing to talk about this issue, if and, and maybe this is just my opinion, but if the police decide that this is assault and they want to do whatever they do with that, if the university decides that they want to pursue it, an internal investigation as far as if she's Melissa Click is is fit to have continued contact with with students as a faculty member. Who, like, you know, threatened a student. Um, is that is that newsworthy in your opinion to that part of the story, uh, especially if it has a very high risk of distracting and giving kind of ammo to racists to not talk about race? I, I would have loved to film out there all day. Um, the only reason I, I didn't was because a it needed to be published uh, immediately, and b I was straight out of of camera battery. Um, because my, my camera only has about um, 20 minutes of battery life. Thanks, Canon. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, but I, I would have loved the, the long version to, to really be the story because it really does give the, the, full, to the full context of the story. Um, well, yeah. Just, I mean, just to be clear. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you, can, that one you can like do that. Like well, I'm telling you, I told you on November 9th that you were going to become a useful object for the right-wing media through that video. I mean, I sent you a couple of Facebook messages about it. Uh, and right now I'm telling you that if fucking Stormfront is using your video as a recruitment or to stoke the flames of white supremacy, that's an enormous problem and you should take that video down immediately and direct people to watch the 12-minute version of the video because it does provide more context. You can't just say fuck racism yeah, and I, I think, I think I, I mean, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, Mark, but I think this is a, a learnable moment. If there's a, I, I don't know YouTube, but if there is a, a technological way to do this, to direct people to the long version, and at the same time say, uh, I want to, again, not telling you what to say, but if, you're, if your goal is to make sure people have as much context as possible, but at the same time say, uh, I, I don't want this to be the focus, because I'm concerned that you said, uh, that you want the primary story to be the long version. And that seems to conflict with what you were saying earlier about the primary story being race. Uh, at, at what point is, is it, are you, 
All right, I'm just going to ask you this directly. At what point are you going to stop doing interviews about this assault issue and direct people to talk to concerned student 1950 about the race issue if, I, I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, to force this, but what do you think about the, the continued talking about that as a distraction and as I said, providing ammo to racists and, and media people who don't want to discuss racism and looking for a way out of that? Uh, at what point does that shift for you? The moment that um, Melissa, sh Melissa Click resigns or is fired. Um, what? And, until we get past that, we're not going to move forward on the racism aspect. Um, so you want her to be fired for protecting people against racism? That's, that's what it sounds like to me. So you want her to be fired for being uh, a white ally? A, a student <laughs> and also a, a, another cameraman. But, but my point, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to take over if you weren't finished speaking, but my, my point is, is that, is that part of the news narrative still? And, and what purpose is this serving? I mean, is, what, what is the connection logically between continuing to talk about this in a news way uh, versus just talking to the university about an investigation that hasn't yet occurred? Is, is this, are, are you trying to do the court of public opinion thing? Are you trying to put public pressure on her to resign? And is that the, the goal behind news? That's a large aspect of it. Um, if the administration thinks that they can uh, continue to ignore this and just let the, the, the emails pile up, uh, they're dead wrong. Uh, I'm, I'm committed to seeing this um, get to the final conclusion, which is her dismissal from the university. She has not gone through um, conduct process like her um, colleague in Greek life, uh, Janet Baxler, in the video. Um, unless we, we keep up the pressure, the university is going to win in, um, in the long run. Uh, she may get an, a, a, a slap on the wrist from a, a, an assault um, trial, but uh, I, I think the, the bigger issue is she's still teaching students. She went into class Tuesday and, and taught. And, um, there's been zero acknowledgement from the administration at, at the university, although I, I, I did hear it through the grapevine that, um, that the, the new system president is interested in looking into it. But, but in the meantime, <laughs> the, the oppression of black students is not, uh, is not the focus. And uh, I mean, if, if, that's, if that's something that, I, it seems to me that if, if it is your goal to return the conversation to racism uh, in the news, that the most effective way to do that would be to stop the conversation in the news about other things. Um, I, I, we've got a lot of audience questions, so I don't want to, okay. You got four minutes to get it done, brother. Okay. Greta, did you have a question? You're, I know you're leaving now. Greta, you had a question. Uh, okay. Okay, Just, uh, do other people have questions? Well, I understand where you're coming from as media because I know how important media was for Ferguson because the police, people in that area were trying to shut down black voices by shutting down media. I do understand where you're coming from there. However, if we think about it in a general, you know, the context of the situation, these peaceful protesters became aggravated when people approached onto their peacefulness. And so whenever they're feeling harassed, attacked, I hope you would understand how somebody in that situation who is subjugated to all kinds of aggressive behavior on a daily basis like these people are, that behavior will be seen as something that needs to be, we need to protect ourselves from this behavior. So while we understand the importance of media having their First Amendment right to film, to do these things, there was a press conference later that day that where these, you know, things could be asked, things could be resolved, but in this situation, it almost seems like like just this systematic just aggressiveness against black bodies that continues in our society whenever they're just crying out to be left in peace to have a moment where they can make the next move to be equal in, you know, the sense of their voices being heard, 
you know, and there are, is a time and place for you to go forward with asking people questions, taking pictures, things like that. But when people are assaulting you, I do not, con like, I, I do not think that that was right. But as somebody had said before, what else would have been able, you know, because your entitlement to get that story, that entitlement to go into that space, that's what we're kind of having a problem with. We're very thankful that you are trying your best to say fuck racism, the things that you want. But I think the problems that we're having in the audience is just this focus on an assault that never would have happened if this aggressive behavior wasn't, you know, like if I, I'm a small girl, if a very, if a person is coming up to me aggressively, I'm going to put my hands out in protection of my person. And so I think that is not, we're not having a problem with you as a person, but I can't speak for everybody. We have a problem with what you're saying about the assault. Because she is going and teaching classes, but before she touched that, that video, she touched you, she was peaceful, you know? And she's going into class and she's teaching peace. You know, I'm sure she doesn't condone people pushing or, you know, doing things like that. Cause there have been media that stands up for black people in Ferguson and they went to jail straight along with the rest of Black Lives Matters, you know, and so we understand that media is important and we need it. It's do your job, but watch out because what you're seeing, what you're videoing is, is aggressive whenever it didn't need to become that way. These people, I don't believe, wanted to become aggressive. They were, you know, whenever you're constantly yeah, instigated, you're gonna put your hands up and they didn't put fists up, they went like this. And that's a very, you know, that's a, that's a very, yeah, defensive view. So I, get the, I get the personal space um, the thing because um, better than a lot of people in this room. I, I am uh, openly, I have autism. Um, af after this, this, um, this meeting, I will probably go up into my room and, and cry for about 10 minutes uh, because I've had Stop. more uh, interaction today and this week than I, I ever get in a year. Um, so I, I get that. <laughs> um, but from the beginning, this was a very social media, um, press-centric, um, yeah. grassroots movement yeah. Uh, we, we have to stop. We're we have to stop. I'm sorry. Uh, th this is not a conversation we're going to resolve today. We're here all weekend. Please come talk to Mark uh, on the record if you prefer. Um, we, we've got to wrap this up, though. But I, I appreciate your attention. I appreciate your comments. Mark also, I'm sure, agrees with that. Uh, and, and we'll pick this up the rest of this week uh, in person. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to release it 100% on cut. If you want your name on here, you could like say your name and spell it out. Oh, I don't mind. Um, Diane Burkholder, D-I-A-N-E, Burkholder, B-U-R-K-H-O-L-D-E-R. -E I'm a co-moderator of the Kansas City Freethinkers of Color. Guys, I'm going to release this 100% uncut. Um, if you'd like your name set in here, say it and spell it. Oh. Well, do that. are we doing that? You don't, don't have to. You don't, I just, you don't I just have, have a co-moderator of free thinkers. I'm not going to cut it and edit it. I'm just going to like release it as is. Yeah, no, you don't, I'm you just, don't have I'm to. one of the members of Kansas City Free Thinkers of Color as well. My name's okay. Lucky Garcia. Uh, do you want it, your name posted on there? It doesn't matter. I'm not. Yes or no? <laughs> um, like, I want to do what you wish. Yeah, sure. Okay, and then say your name and spell your name. Uh, well, my name is Carissa Garcia. It's C-A-R-I-S-S-A. G-A-R-C-I-A, from Kansas City, Missouri. Okay. Would you want to go by Chris or Lucky? Mm -hmm. It's up to you. It doesn't matter. Okay. It's not a secret identity. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, guys. Hi. Yeah. Thank you very much. Very important.